Animal Welfare League of Alexandria presents Alexandria Animal Matters, a show produced by the League's all-volunteer crew. Each week, our special guests will inform and entertain you and your children on the many aspects of loving animal care. Learn how to keep your pet healthy, adopt the perfect pet for your family, reduce the number of strays, and so much more. Plus, in our featured pet segment, we'll introduce you to some of the many animals at the shelter. Now sit back, relax, it's time for Animal Matters. Good evening, welcome again to Alexandria Animal Matters. I'm Linda Couture, your host. And once again, we have, uh, I think, a really exciting evening of, of animals and people for you to watch. Um, our special guest tonight is indeed extra special. Well, actually, both of them. Vola Lawson is with us, um, and Vola is currently on the board of, of Alexandria Animal, of the, of the League. Um, but she, as you know, that the shelter is named after her. So she's brought along one of her two pets, Jack. Um, so welcome, Vola. It's such a pleasure to be with you here tonight, Linda. Jack and I both have been looking <laughs> forward to it because our hope is that by talking about the shelter, people will be interested in going down there and adopting one of the animals. Well, thank you for saying that because I think one of the things we want people to do most of all is to come visit us, at least take a look at it. If they don't want to take home an animal, you know, they might want to contribute somehow as a volunteer or to give some money to make sure we continue to operate. But it's because of you and your efforts um, that we have this beautiful shelter. I know it's still not large enough, but we always need more space. But how did that happen? Well, it is beautiful, and I'm told that the state brings jurisdictions that are thinking about having a new shelter to look at ours because really? it really is like a state of the art, or it was at the time that it opened in 2002. But it really was the result of the work of an awful lot of people. Uh, Jack Steele, who chaired the um, Animal Welfare League board for years, and so many of the area veterinarians, the mayor, the city council, uh, and any number of volunteers who have contributed their time and their money uh, to make it a reality. So it really was a labor of love for an awful lot of people. But you um, are you're selling yourself a little short because um, you and your husband live here in Alexandria. Uh, I know he's deceased now, but you, you moved here when, in the 80s? We moved here in 1965. Oh. When our younger son was, I think, four months old and our other son was four and a half. Wow. So we've lived here a long time. And then you, um, had this job at the city, um, not a little job I might add, but the city manager for how many years? 15 was years. I was with the city almost 30 and oh. 15 of them were as the city manager from 1985 to 2000. So what mayors were, you, were there? I worked for four mayors uh, for, uh, as manager uh, for Chuck Beatley, for Jim Moran, for Patsy Tyser, and for Carrie Donnelly, oh. all of them terrific public servants. So you had a great time there. But I certainly we're did. We're getting a little astray here, aren't we, Jack? I want to hear, um, you apparently are a special dog. Um, oh, he's very special. Jack is also a senior dog now. He will be 15 in the fall. <sighs> And other than his allergies, he has to get allergy shots. He's in generally good health. He's getting a little arthritis. But uh, I've had him since he was about five or six weeks old. So I've been his life's companion. You are a pampered pup. Your mom tells me that you have been a pampered pup since the day she brought you home. And you have um, a kitty at home that came from the shelter. I do. Tell I us have about a kitty that came from the shelter. They're best friends. They both sleep on the bed with me uh, at night. Uh, my cat's name is Faulkner, and I adopted him in 2003. He'd been a homeless street cat that oh. had been brought in, and of indeterminate age. They thought, I think, he was three or four years old. So I really believe very much in adopting the older animals. And, well, uh, tell me, yeah, because you told me, and I think the audience could really benefit about why, when you went to the shelter, you didn't come home with a kitten. It was interesting. I went down there thinking I'd get a kitten, because I thought a kitten and Jack would probably be able to get along uh, much better than if I got an older cat. But boy, was I wrong. And so when I went down there, and I took Jack with me, because they have little adoption rooms, that if you bring your pet down there, you can see if your new pet and they get along and so I was thinking of a kitten but I, there were two families there with children back there with the kittens and I thought you know 
those kittens are going to fly out of here. <laughs> and so I said, where are the harder to adopt, which means the older cats? And there were three of them. And I went over there and ran my finger along the little cage, and this little black paw came out, and I knew that was it. And so we went into the little room with uh, Jack and with this black cat, and from the very beginning they got along famously. And so uh, we thought he was maybe three, four, we don't know how old the cat was. But I, we just love him very much, and he's a part of the family, too. So you're like many of us. You believe these animals pick us, right? There's no question. Our I cameraman think. here has the big black dog, and his big black dog brought home a kitty. So, you know, That's we just it. think those stories well, Jack are so real. Well, Jack picked me, and this cat really picked me, as I said. <laughs> Well, how many um, other animals in the family? You have a couple of children, so. I have my uh, two sons, and my older son, David, uh, is married and lives down in Norfolk and has my two older grandchildren, Rachel, who's 13, and David Jr., uh, who's uh, going on 11. And they have a Japanese Chen dog, and they have two cats. And my younger son and his wife and my two youngest grandchildren, uh, Josie and uh, Ellie, uh, Josie's two and a half and Ellie's six months. Oh, those and are they, little kids. Yes, they're little kids. They have uh, a cat. And when they get a bigger house, they're certainly going to have a dog because they're both animal lovers, too. So when your kids were growing up, were they coming home with animals? I mean, oh, yes. Did you have everything to deal with? I mean, did they come home with... Cats. and Actually, it was usually cats or dogs. Because you have boys. So I know That's my right. daughter came home with rats and snakes and horned dogs. Amazingly <laughs> enough, they never came home with the more exotic animals. <laughs> But we do have those at the shelter. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we've it's got, amazing how many birds we had birds in recent and years. Rabbits and, and uh, uh, different kinds of, of animals there. It's not just, although we traditionally think of the cats and dogs, but there's a whole variety of, of animals at the shelter. Well, Vola, you're really a, a great supporter, and I know um, our president um, of the board. Ha Gordon, who we interviewed um, on this program as well, you said that he twisted your arm and you're now serving as a board member. Gordon talked to me a couple of years ago, and at that time I had a number of volunteer activities. I feel almost as busy now <laughs> as I was before I retired. And I was getting off of one of the boards uh, early this year, and I had said to him, when I do, I'll have time, and certainly it's certainly something very close to my heart. So what are some of the... Um, issues that you know you're working with on the board I mean what are some of the initiatives are you on some of like the strategic pro plan or um, at this time are you looking at I think they're looking at adoption processes are you we're involved looking at in the some policies I'm and as I say I came on just a couple of months ago but we're looking at adoption policies we want to make sure that we safeguard uh, the health and, and safety of the animals and yet make sure that we're not uh, putting up unnecessary impediments to adoptions of these animals because we want them all to find a good home. Yeah, so are you finding that rewarding? Very rewarding. We had some animals from Katrina and I know there was one dog that came up who had uh, had his le hind legs right. injured and they worked with that dog and exercised him for over a year until they found just the right family for him. I know. I remember the day that Tara was had tears in her eyes because this this couple finally came in and took that that animal. And we want to do some shows on bringing home animals that have some special needs, bringing home older animals. We're going to be talking about that later on this show. Um, and you know, and dealing. We have a lot of program ideas. So Vola, um, we want you to come back, but we also want you to give us your ideas for future shows. I am so looking forward to, to doing that and to working on so many of the strategic. Yeah, areas. when you start to um, watch this, um, you know, then please give us a call and tell us. I'm on the board, but I'm often not there because I'm over here in the studio. <laughs> but and get all your friends to tune in and. Um, you know, we just are so happy that you brought this handsome animal with you this evening. And my crew here has had a, the best time with you, Jack. So Jack's we love having you. Jack's and he's a very old dog. So I really speak to the, the advantages of these loving older animals. I have two of them. My cat and my dog now are older. Yeah, and I think that, um, you know, people need to understand that because you, that there are dogs available, that very often it's because... Um, the owner somehow couldn't take care of them. It's That's not right. that there's something wrong with the dogs. No. I know people drop dogs off at the shelters for various reasons, and many of them very legitimate. Uh, a friend of mine 
adopted a beagle that you know the owner mm -hmm. got Alzheimer's and couldn't exactly. pay attention to feed the animal right. and so it had to be rescued. And people get old and, and they're not able to walk the dogs. We've had dogs where the owners have gone over to Iraq. So they're wonderful dogs and they just need good loving homes. And well, obviously, the shelter has been given a great name. You're a great Thank lady. You. I mean, I was so thrilled when we came, and everybody goes, oh, you're having Vola Lawson on. Yeah. And it's like, yes, um, we're having her on this evening, and we're, we're um, looking forward to having you back again. And we're, um, I have really <laughs> been looking forward to this, because if we turn up one person that's going to go down to the shelter and adopt one of our animals, it, it, that'll be wonderful. Well, I know Tara said that they adopt out almost 100 a month. I know. Isn't that terrific? I mean, I, when I read that shelter report, I'm just amazed. And apparently, in the, and we're so good at it, that they don't come back. You know, they, they take yes. the time to make sure, like you did, putting the kitty and the dog together yes, to make exactly. sure that they were going to be compatibles. That makes a big difference. We don't want these puppies to have to come back. No. <laughs> Well, Are Jack, you okay? thank you for being such thank a good so guest. Thank you so much for having us. And as I say, I hope anybody that's listening, if you are thinking about having an animal, that you go down. We have a wonderful assortment of all kinds of animals down at the shelter. And I think you'll find one down there uh, that, that will have your name on that'll it. That will have your name <laughs> on it. And definitely, you know, they can look at the website and they can that's read right. our newsletter. If they don't have time to go down, then they can do that and then check it out later. But I think, you know, living with animals really adds a special dimension to your life. It, no question about that. We will be back um, with another segment. Stay tuned. Gold medal swimmer Amanda Beard. When America's national symbol, the bald eagle, was threatened with extinction, we responded with the Endangered Species Act, a law which now protects more than a thousand different species. But as some species recover, others become imperiled. Let us pledge to the next generation that we will help protect America's wildlife heritage for them. Thanks, Thanks Amanda. Amanda. Join me and Defenders of Wildlife to help save something wild. Visit defenders.org. Welcome to our animal segment. This evening we're going to talk about adopting an older dog. And for our special guest, we have Amy Devine, who is a volunteer at the shelter. She's been there, I think, three and a half years walking mm -hmm. dogs, but she's also our assistant director. So she's one of our special guests because she's behind the scenes helping make this show come true. So let's talk about your dog, Amy. Well, this is Tina. Tina's a Yorkshire Terrier. Um, she was about seven years old when we adopted her three years ago. So weren't you a little worried when you adopted an older dog that why would someone give away a good dog like this? Well, in Tina's case, um, she had been owned by a breeder, and she had had lots of puppies over the years, and when her time of having babies was over, she was turned into rescue. So oh. Tina hadn't done anything wrong. She just got older, like all of us do. So is there any truth to that old adage you can't you know, teach an old dog new tricks. What's happened with Tina? Oh, wow. Tina's learned so many things because she had been kept in an outdoor kennel. So oh. she learned all sorts of things about how to live in the house. She was crate trained, house trained. Um, I took, it took us two weeks, but I taught her how to sit for a treat. So she's really learned a lot. I was really surprised. Did, and did you and your family find it harder to bond with an old dog than with a puppy? Oh, wow. That was really the most wonderful part of all. Um, my husband teases me that Tina's my little baby duck <laughs> because she follows me literally everywhere, Aww. and that happened within the first week. Really? Dogs are very um, happy to be around people, and they're very adaptable. And so we've bonded really well. She even, if I get up during the night, she'll get up and follow me into the bathroom. Oh. Well, how did you and your husband um, philosophically deal with, you know, adopting an older dog, knowing that mm -hmm. how many years that, you know, she might have with you? How did right. you feel about that? Well, I mean, Tina was seven when we got her, and I know that we won't have her as long as we would like to, but she has a lot of healthy years ahead of her. Smaller dogs live